Number 10. Carry out this little subtraction of these two fractions with expressions in them. Little warning at the side not to try and put those numbers in if you want to stay safe. Right, three marks for this. Well, you want a common denominator, that'll just be multiply the two you've got, x times x minus 3. That's already got this factor, so it'll need x multiplying it, making a 7x. That's already got the x, so it'll need the x minus 3 multiplying it, x minus 3. Now just multiply that out, so you've got 7x minus the 2 times x, but minus minus, plus 6. Don't multiply at the bottom because that's nice and neat. Something might factorise. Top comes to 7x, take away 2x is 5x. Nothing happens to the 6. That would factorise, so you're just stuck with that. So there's your answer. Number 11 then. A trig equation. This equation here gives you the height of the tip of this hand as it rotates around. Starting at the 12, so starting at the top, which is what the cos does, doesn't it? You have to find the first two values of x for when the tip is at 150. So let's just solve that equation with the height equals 150. So 2 cos x, I'll just be lazy and just put x, plus 147 is 150. Now just get rid of all the bits and pieces. There's three things to get rid of. 147, get rid of that. Oh, maybe I'll put it back in, feeling a bit guilty. So it's 150, I should just have put the 3 down, shouldn't I? Just take the 147 across. Now divide by 20, so 3 upon 20. Now finally get rid of that cos, and at this point I might get rid of the degree sign. So that's going to be inverse cos of 3 upon 20. So you put that into your calculator and then figure out what the other angle is. So typing that in gives you an answer of 81, and you know this is positive, so this will be one of the answers. 81.373, I'll say, and so on, but you could at that point round it off. But what would the other answer be? Well, when is the cosine positive? You can either think of the graph, or you could put the little, I'll not be using this space here, all sine tan cos. Where's the cosine positive? It's positive if that angle was here, or if that angle was there. So it's either the 81 or it's 360 minus it. So you've either got that or you've got 360 minus 81.373 and so on. So the answers would be X is, now round it off, 81.4 or taking that away from 360, just ignoring the sign because I did it backwards, gives you 278.6. Number 12 for 3 marks, simplify this fraction. That means you'll be dividing the top and the bottom, so it'll need to be factorised. Well, what have you got? Difference of two squares. x minus 4, x plus 4. Quadratic. Another pair of brackets. You know that one of them must be one of them for it to simplify. But anyway, it'll be x times x, and that'll be a 4 and a 5. 4 fives are 20. But I want the sum to come to plus in the middle. So I want a plus 5x for the outer product and a minus 4x for the middle product to make this work. Now those two factors can cancel out, leaving just the x plus 4 on its own on the top and the x plus 5. Number 13. Just for two marks, simplify this. Show you're working. Well, you better show that you're taking out a common factor to leave sine squared x plus cos squared x. Oops. And then you should know that sine squared plus cos squared makes 1. So I can show that by replacing that with a 1, which means the answer's 2. So that's all there was to that one. So question 14, you can see it's going to be solve a quadratic equation using the formula. First of all, you've got to derive this equation. Here's a box, there's the dimensions, the length, the breadth, the height, and it tells you that the volume should be 45. So you just do that. What's the volume? 
it'll be the length times the breadth times the height. I think I'll put it in a different order. It'll be 2 times x times x plus 7. So that will be 2x squared plus 14x. You also know that the volume is meant to be 45. So that means that 2x squared plus 14x, that's the volume, should come to 45. Then you just throw it all over to one side. 2x squared plus 14x minus the 45 equals 0, which is what you wanted. Now part B, calculate x. Luckily, just the breads there. Correct to one decimal place. That just means solve that equation. There should be two answers, so one will probably end up negative. So we're solving that equation, so we'll just put it down here. This is what x should be. Negative b all over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Just pop all that in. Negative of b, negative 14 plus or minus b. Again, the 14 squared, 4 times a. And that's a negative 45 for c. All over 2 times a, which is the 2. You could just type all that straight in. I'll just tidy it up slightly. Now there's a plus and a minus. Now with a negative at the beginning, I don't want to be taking anything away from it. So I don't know if you even need to show that answer because that couldn't possibly be, it has to be a, a positive number. So there's only one possibility. It must be the negative 14 plus. But anyway, what does that bit come to? So that bit comes to 556. Five, now, you don't actually need to do that. That means you've got two answers, but you could put them both down and then say the reason for that one is it has to be greater than zero. But I think I'll just go in with the positive answer. So I'm just going to do the one with the plus in it. So just typing in that one gives you 2.3949 and so on, which means x has to be 2 point to one decimal place, 4 metres. But we know x greater than 0. If you're feeling a bit curly, you could always put the other one in because it just means just going back and changing it. So if you wanted to, which you would have done first, negative 9.3949 and so on. Which of course it couldn't be. So question 15, the last question, what have we got? You've got this large triangle with a small right angle triangle tucked into one corner, gives you the various sizes. It tells you the area of that triangle is 160. You have to work out the length of AE. Well, you know how to work out the area of the big triangle because the AE is a length in the big triangle. I know one side of the big triangle. I have to work out the other one. I know its area. So this angle is going to be involved so you can use that formula for the area of a triangle. The one that looks like a half A, B, sine C. Only obviously they're not called A's, B's and C's in the order I'm using them in. So what would that be? A half of, now the two lengths of the big triangle. So they're working. One of them's 18 and 6, so that's 24. The other one's the one I want, so I'll just call that AE. Times the sine of, and it'll be that angle A. And that lot should come to 160. That's the way it works. Area of a triangle. A half of the two sides times the sine of the included angle. Now, that means I just need sine A, and I've got everything I need to find AE. You'll get sine A from that little triangle. You won't even need A, because that triangle gives you the sine of A directly. The sine is the opposite, and that is the opposite over 18. Now, you can simplify it or not, because it's a calculator paper, but um, if you just half them, that's four ninths. So just popping that into there, I'll simplify that as well. 24 half, that's 12. So you've got 12 times AE times 4 ninths should come to 160. So AE will just be, we'll take the 9 across and multiply, and take the multiplying ones across and divide. And that comes to 30. So 30 centimetres.